Now I'm going to tell you guys how to actually use a budget for saving up for something you actually want and how to make it happen. The way to save up for a trip to Hawaii Hey guys, it's Jess. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you are having an amazing day so far. So today's video is the next episode in my Girl Boss series. And if you guys don't know what that is, basically it's a series I have here on my channel where I share all sorts of Girl Boss tips and tricks to help you guys be productive, organized, successful, and most of all, just good people. Today's video topic was highly requested and it's been requested for quite a while. I'm gonna be sharing all of my saving money and budgeting tips and tricks with you guys to ensure that you are being financially responsible, that we got money in the bank, that at the end of the month we are not screwed, and that when tax season rolls around, we are ready. If you guys wanna check out the other episodes in my Girl Boss playlist, I will have it linked below so you guys can check it out. And if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more, please don't forget to subscribe down below to join the family. And with that, let's hop on in. The purpose of a zero-based budget is to make your income minus what comes out equal zero. Now I know that sounds kinda of crazy and you're like, girl, what you talking about? So let's say you make $1,000 a month and 700 of that goes towards expenses, rent, grocery, bills, transportation, health, entertainment, etc. Now you have $300 left over. Woohoo! However, that $300 that's not being used towards anything in your budget needs to go somewhere. Otherwise, you're going to have this mindset of, oh, I have $300 left over, and you'll feel compelled to spend it. So what you should do is allocate that $300 to go into another section of your budget. Now I'm not saying put $300 more towards groceries or fun or entertainment. The $300 should get allocated to something else, whether it's general savings, paying off a debt, or just saving up for a rainy day fund. That $300 needs to go somewhere so you don't feel like it's excess, abundance, easy to spend, because you will convince yourself that it's extra and you'll want to spend it. Making a physical, tangible budget is so crucial because if you just try to keep all the numbers up in your head, oh, $200 for groceries, $100 for this, $100 for this, it's going to get jumbled up and lost and there's no way you're gonna actually be able to keep track of it and more likely than not, you're going to overspend. So make yourself a physical, actual, tangible budget that you actually use. Don't just make a budget and put the numbers in and be like, okay, yeah, I'll spend $200 here, $100 for this, and that's my budget for the month. Actually input the numbers actually stay on top of it. When you go to the grocery store and you spend $50, put that into the budget. Have it come out of what you're allocating for every month. You're actually aware of what you're spending and you can keep track of what money you have left for the rest of the month. If you were just spending and you're not staying on top of your budget and actually putting the numbers in, you are definitely gonna lose track of how much you're spending and you're gonna go over budget. Budgeting and saving money requires a lot of self-discipline and staying on top of things. And when you don't stick to it, be aware of why you didn't stick to it, what happened. Also, another tip with this is to put your budget somewhere where you are going to see it and you're actually going to use it. So if you like a physical printed copy, print a copy out and put it in your kitchen, put it on your fridge and fill it out every time you spend money. Maybe you like a digital copy on Excel or Google Sheets. Fill it out, put it on your desktop so every time you spend money you can just click it, add it in, and you know what's up. Now the sex tip is one I have talked about quite a bit on my channel recently, and I think it's such a helpful supplementary tool. Get a budgeting app. I know there's a bunch out there, so figure out which one's your favorite and stick to it. But basically the reason that a budgeting app is so great is it really keeps you on top of what you're spending. What areas of spending are a little too frivolous and where you can cut back? Being aware of where your money is going and how much you typically spend each month, that is where you'll be able to start creating your budget from. By noticing these patterns and realizing what money is going where, you'll be able to incorporate all of this information into creating an awesome zero-based budget. Now I feel like historically, this is one of those budgeting tips that everybody always talks about and everybody says you should do, but nobody actually does it even though it's so beneficial. Carry only cash and spend only cash. Now the most popular reason that I'm sure you guys have heard somewhere is that physical tangible cash is harder to spend. Yes, it's true, but it's not just that. Having a monthly budget where you have a $500 budget for yourself every month, the way you do this is if your monthly budget is $500 a month, every month at the beginning of the month, you pull out $500 and you pull out money from yourself every time you need to spend. The reason that this is so beneficial is if you're pulling out money from yourself, you can physically, tangibly see how much you're spending and how much is left over. For example, if you have that $500 monthly budget and it's only the sixth and you've spent $400, that means you have $100 for the rest of the month 
and you're going to definitely rethink your spending habits. This one is a little bit more serious and drastic, but if you are really trying to get ahead of your money and stay on top of your finances, or maybe you have a spending problem or you struggle with just staying on top of your money, having a practice like this is really going to keep you accountable and it's going to make sure you're financially responsible. <laughs> If you do somehow have extra money at the end of the month, instead of thinking of it as extra, like, ooh, I can spend this, put it into savings. No thought, just put it right into savings. Like I mentioned earlier, having that excess money is going to make you feel compelled to spend it because it's extra, it's excess. It's like, oh, this is this is just extra money. Like, I'll just spend it, I'll buy this thing, and it's going to create bad spending habits. I am not telling you guys not to have fun, not to go out with friends, not to go shopping, because you can totally do that. Just build it into your budget so you're being aware of what you're spending and you're not just spending extra money you weren't planning on spending in the first place. Hey guys, so I don't know what happened to this footage of this clip. I don't know if it got deleted or corrupted or like if it wasn't filming in the first place, but I had to make sure I re-recorded because this tip is so essential for anybody who is a fellow YouTuber, who works for themselves, who does contract work, who is a freelancer, any type of thing where you don't get paid from like a corporation. This is so important, so crucial, and it's something nobody ever tells you. So listen up. Every time that you get paid from anything that's trackable, either you fill out a W-9 or you get paid through PayPal or anything that there's like a paper trail, you gotta pay taxes on it. Anytime that you get paid through anything that's trackable income, take out the tax cut yourself. When you work for yourself or you're a YouTuber or you're a freelancer, the company or employer who is paying you does not take out taxes. They just give you the flat fee, your paycheck, with no taxes taken out. And I know that sounds exciting, like, yes, no taxes, I got all this money. No, the tax man does not leave anybody out. No YouTubers, no freelancers. The tax man will come. So, to ensure that when tax season rolls around and you file for your taxes, that when you get your taxes back, you don't end up with a big fat statement saying you owe hundreds to thousands of dollars that you don't have accounted for, that you don't have saved for, and now you just owe like $8,000. All of a sudden, you have to come up with. Take out the tax cut yourself. A good rule of thumb is to save 30 to 35% every time you get paid. When you save this money, put it into a separate tax account that you do not touch until tax season. Now you get your taxes back and it says you owe $8,000. You're prepared. You have that $8,000 saved in your tax account and you can just pay it no thought you don't have to stress no worries it's just done and if for any reason you oversaved you get your taxes back and it says you only owe five thousand dollars not eight now you have an extra three thousand dollars it is time to treat yourself go off sis like do what you want to do or of course you can keep saving it keep putting it away do what you want to do with it that is your tax money that is money that you saved for Now that we know some budgeting tips and how to create a budget and how to stick to it and why it's important to stick to a budget, we're gonna put this all into action for a little scenario so I can give you guys a really good example of how to actually use a budget for saving up for something you actually want, how to make it happen. Let's say you wanna go to Hawaii. I feel like everybody and their mother is going to Hawaii right now. So let's say you wanna go to Hawaii next. The way to save up for a trip to Hawaii is to actually plan the trip first. Instead of just picking an arbitrary number that may or may not be realistic for this trip. What you should do instead is plan the whole entire trip. Figure out exactly how much it's going to cost. Figure out how much flights are gonna cost, hotel, activities, food, etc., and so forth. And let's say the whole trip for a week in Hawaii of doing all the stuff you wanna do is going to cost you $2,675. And let's say you wanna go to Hawaii sometime in September. To make sure you're getting good flight prices, you need to book your trip two to three months out. So to have the trip in September, you need to book your tickets by July. You have five months to save $2,675. So every month you have to save $535 to be able to afford that whole trip to Hawaii. So if you can't afford that, start putting away that $535 every month and start saving towards that. But if you can't swing it, this is where you start looking at your budget and figuring out where you need to adjust, what sections of your budget can you cut back in, maybe you adjust the entertainment section of your budget from $100 to $20 a month, and you just keep adjusting until you can save that amount of money to put towards your Hawaii trip. Adjust your budget for saving and adjust your timeline if it just doesn't work out, and figure out a good meet in the middle spot where you can save X amount of dollars a month to go towards a trip later on in the year. Now the time comes to book your tickets, you have all the money you need, and you can have an amazing trip an amazing week-long trip in Hawaii which sounds so nice and wonderful or maybe you like having the money in your account and you can keep saving or maybe you could put it towards a bigger purchase like a new car or maybe save it towards going 
for a down payment on a house and you just keep saving and saving and that is the way to actually make trips happen and make things happen and save for big things that are kind of hard to save for because this is money that you budgeted for and you allocated for something fun Now that you guys know all about budgeting and my tips and tricks for that, I have a few money saving tips that you guys can use if you're just trying to figure out small ways to cut back in your everyday life and figure out how to save money just in small ways, things that you might not think about that actually will save you quite a bit of money. This tip is a major money saver and one you should definitely implement. Instead of going out with your friends, out to a restaurant, out to a bar, out for drinks, out for hanging out, food money, it costs drink money, sometimes it costs valet money, and all of that adds up quite a bit. I'm not trying to pay $23 for a glass of wine. I could buy four bottles of Costco wine that are this big for the same amount. Have a game night, have a movie night, just have people over for drinks and hanging out. Having people over saves so much money because buying things from the store and just eating them at your house just is so much more affordable. And if you are hosting and you don't wanna offset the cost of buying everybody food or drinks, have everybody chip in, have it be like a potluck. If you are going to a restaurant, skip the alcohol and skip the soda. All of that just adds up so much, just get water, it's free, it's zero dollars, and also don't get a straw because we're all trying to save the, we're trying to save the planet here. Even if you just get two alcoholic beverages at 13 or $15 each, that's already $30. On top of your 15, $20 food, that's $50. Also quite similar, stop going to Starbucks. Starbucks is expensive. At the very least, cut back. If you go to Starbucks every day and you get a venti latte, that's like $5 every day. $5 minimum five times a week, $25 times four, that's $100 every month. Invest in a curate. You can make coffee at home. If you are a student, take advantage of student discounts. I don't know of any students that actually take advantage of student discounts, but you should because you can save so much money. There are so many online retailers that offer student discounts. You shop on a Tuesday and you use your student ID, you save 10%. You just Google student discounts, you will find so many stores, restaurants, coffee shops that have student discounts usually for like 10 or 15% off. And it's so worth it because if every day you save 10% on your purchases, at the end of the month, that is going to add up to quite the pretty penny. That is a wrap on today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope this video was helpful. If you guys have been struggling to manage your finances or be financially responsible, I really hope that these tips and tricks can really help you. And when it comes to finances and money, you just really gotta be on top of it and take it seriously and you have to hold yourself accountable. You got this girl. If you guys have any budgeting or saving money tips or tricks, please share them in the comment section because I am always looking for stuff and I'm sure other people will also be. Wow, what a, what a great sentence, Jess, but you guys know what I mean? You guys know what I'm attempting to do? Okay, things are getting awkward. Let's move on to the quote of the day segment. So today's quote of the day is a really good one. It's from Warren Buffett, who is one of the richest men in the world. I think this quote is a really good one to keep in mind. So listen closely, guys. Do not save what is left after spending, but spend what is left after saving. So keep that in mind as you go through your journey of financial responsibility. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Thank you guys again for watching today's video. I love you guys lots and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. Stop making up excuses when I simply don't care. Why?